You should really make this. It's actually so good. It's amazing how well it holds together. I'm just gonna keep eating this pizza. <laughs> I do have broccoli in my teeth, <laughs> for sure. Oh my God, it's so good. Look at this thing. Hey, I'm Paula, this is How to Make Dinner. Today we're making a broccoli crust pizza and it's really delicious and really easy and you get to eat pizza and get your veggies at the same time. First thing you do is bust out your food processor and grind two tablespoons of oats to make oat flour. That's all oat flour is, it's just ground up oats. It's as easy as that. I'm just doing this now because it'll be harder once the food processor is covered with broccoli. So. Couple more. So that's it, it's kind of, it's not super fine, but it'll do. We just need enough, uh, need it to be ground enough to kind of hold the mixture together. So I'm just gonna take these oats and chuck them right into a big bowl. And that's gonna be the bowl that I mix the whole broccoli, broccoli crust pizza dough in. So, put the thing back together. And then I have 450 grams of broccoli here. <laughs> and this is just, uh, yeah, this is another way, another time when I love weighing because I don't want to weigh like cups of broccoli. How do you do that? It's like, how do you shove this into a cup measure? Um, so it's 450 grams or 16 ounces. And I'm just going to chop it up slightly so that the food processor can handle it. Just like little chunks. Oopsie. And now I'm not really a huge like alt crust or alt milk kind of like, I kind of just eat everything. I eat flour, I eat drink, I eat cheese, I eat everything. Um, so this isn't really me trying to give you a pizza crust substitute. This is more just, I actually think it's really delicious. Um, it's kind of like, it's its own thing, you know? It's, it's not a pizza dough substitute, it's a broccoli pizza dough. If that makes any sense, <laughs> or maybe I'm just ranting again, whatever. Okay, so I'm gonna do this in a couple of batches just so that it all fits. So I'm just gonna basically pulse it until it is um, kind of like pretty finely chopped actually, but not a paste quite yet. So here we go. A little bit more. So that's about right. It's uh, basically just in tiny little bits. Mm, do I want to do it a little bit more? I'm going to do a little bit more. Make up your mind, woman. <laughs> there we go. So I'm going to take this coarsely ground broccoli and dump it into uh, a pot that I have set up with a steamer basket. You can totally do this in the microwave. This is just, uh, we're just steaming it slightly. We're gonna steam it for about five minutes on the stove or you could do it in a covered dish for like, I'm gonna say three minutes or something in the microwave if that's your thing. This thing, man, <laughs> it's giving me trouble today. Okay, so second batch going in. Hack this up. So, I mean, I just don't think that you'd ever imagine getting this much vegetable in when you're eating pizza. It's just a really nice treat. And kids love it too. I think broccoli is one of those, one of those kid favorite kind of vegetables. Or is it? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe comment below if your kid likes broccoli. <laughs> I 
Perfect. So it's tons of little bits. I'm just going to dump that into the steamer basket as well. And put this on full blast on the stove for five minutes. And then I'm also going to clean up a bit and we'll be right back. So the broccoli's cooked. It's was steaming for about five minutes. It's actually just nicely soft is all it is. So I'm going to take it out and I have a bowl that's lined with a tea towel and I'm going to put the broccoli in there, do my best to get it into the towel, not all over the counter, but not doing that great of a job. And just give it a good squeeze. So now we're just trying to get all the water out. If you're super healthy, you'll probably save this water because it's full of, you know, good things for you. Oh, and by the way, you should want to, you should probably cool this a bit before you try and squeeze it because it's burning my hands right now. <laughs> but I'm going to tough it out. So we just squeeze it all out. Oh, yikes. <laughs> it's really hot. I thought I cooled it for long enough, but maybe not. Hmm. Oh my God, <laughs> it's really hot. I wonder if there's a top tip here. Ooh, I think there's a top tip to, to share. When you need a life hack, just pull out your tongs. <laughs> Guaranteed to help you in any situation. Two sets of tongs? <laughs> Hold on. Okay, so if your broccoli's too hot and you're burning yourself, all you do is you get two pairs of tongs, you hold the top with one, and then you squeeze the, the broccoli with the other. This is amazing. This is a bonus life hack for you folks. I hope you liked it. That's great, isn't it? So once you're pretty certain that you got a good amount of the juice out, this is like, got about half a cup of water out of there. And now of course it's cool enough that I can just squeeze with my hand. Okay, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. When it's kind of uh, as squeezed as it's gonna be, just dump it into the bowl with the oats, the oat, homemade oat flour that we made. Get rid of all this junk. Get rid of this water or drink it if you want to be super healthy. Should I drink it? It doesn't taste bad. It's like broccoli tea. Mm. It's actually kind of nice. That actually, if you were going to make a soup, any kind of soup, you could chuck that in. That'd be great. It's also kind of nice on its own. Okay, quick clean up here. Making a big ass mess. <laughs> okay, so we've got the broccoli and the oat flour in the bowl. And at this point we can add any seasonings we want. Um, garlic powder and onion powder are so good because they just really beef up the flavor. Uh, I'm using some of this uh, dried rosemary that was given to me by a friend who grows it in her garden. Um, it's the best dried rosemary I've ever had and I'm pretty sure that the reason it's so good is because she dried it in a paper bag so that it wasn't exposed to any sunlight and it's just got the most flavor out of any dried like it's so so strong it's great and that friend is named Chloe. Thank you Chloe, for this rosemary. And then we're going to put in one egg and one egg white. So this is going to add the structure. So the egg and the oat flour together are going to make it so that they don't, the pizza crust doesn't fall apart. So this is actually, where's my spoon? 
This is actually a cheese optional crust. I know that a lot of the vegetable crusts that you see online are held together with a lot of cheese. Um, I am going to put some Parmesan cheese in here, but only because I want to and I love it. But with the oat flour and the egg, that's actually enough to hold it together. So that's all you need. So cheese optional. Salt is key though. Salt is not optional. It's very, very important. Quite, this is a four finger pinch that I just did. And I think I might even do a little bit more. I kind of want pizza to be a little bit on the salty side, I think. And then one tablespoon of olive oil that I'm gonna free pour. That's about it. I don't have garlic or onion right now, so otherwise I would probably put it in. And I'm gonna grate, again, it's optional, so it doesn't really matter how much you put in. I'm gonna put in some Parmesan cheese. <laughs> probably works out to about two tablespoons as well. Oopsie. So that's all going together. And at this point, I mean, you can see it's not the kind of dough that you're gonna shape and roll out. It's more of a, we're gonna kind of press it into the pan and then it'll hold its shape uh, when it, as it bakes. It'll kind of, the eggs and the oats will work together to keep it from falling apart. So that's it. And yeah, let's dump it on the tray here. Look how nice and cool that is. It's bright green. I'm gonna get my hands dirty anyway, so I might as well just get in there now. And then we just make it into whatever shape we want. So I'm gonna go for Something of a rectangle, I think. This is such a fun thing to do with kids and it's way faster than making homemade pizza dough. So I'm gonna shape this to, it's gonna be about just under a centimeter thick, I'd say. It also feels really good. <laughs> it's fun. And you can do a little bit of a raised edge if you want. I think that looks pretty good. Nice little rectangle. So I'm gonna put this in the oven. Um, it's preheating to 425 and it's gonna take about 15 to 20 minutes. And, uh, and then it's gonna come out and we'll put toppings on it and we'll eat it and it'll be great. Check out this crust. It's so cool. So that's been in the oven for about 15 minutes. And as you can see, but when I lift it up, it's totally holding together. And we're gonna bake it a bit longer. So it doesn't have to really be brown or anything. It just ha kind of has to be like a solid mass. So at this point, you're just making pizza. So you can top it with whatever you want. I'm using a few things that I had in the fridge, which is some regular old jarred uh, store-bought marinara sauce. I'm not gonna uh, play favorites with name brands or anything, but I tend to lean towards the ones that are on sale. That's about, about it. Okay, so a little bit of sauce, fair bit of sauce. I like my pizza kind of saucy. I don't know about you. And I just have a combination of fennel here, thinly sliced. I did this by hand, but if you had a mandolin, this would be a great time to use it. I feel like I kind of put fennel on everything. I, it's one of those things I'm just a little bit obsessed with. It's so good. And I have some thinly sliced onion because onion has been one of my favorite pizza toppings since I was a little kid. We used to order 
pizza every Friday night as a family and I got pineapple and onion as my pizza toppings every single time. I'd still stand by that. I would eat pineapple and onion pizza, no problem. Okay, so I'm kind of loading it up. And then I have two kinds of cheeses. One is this soft um, Borsen cheese. It's like really nice kind of, kind of cream cheesy and it's got some herbs in it, which is just gonna be really nice and melty and soft. And this is obviously, I mean, most people have, have been making the cauliflower crust pizza, which is basically the exact same thing as this. It's just not green, but it works the same way. So this is a similar method. So that's good. Should I just use that last little bit? I think so. <laughs> I'm the, I refuse to put a tiny amount of anything back in the fridge. It's like, clogging up a fridge with, you know, one bite of a lot of different things is very annoying. <laughs> okay. And then a little grate of parm at the end because I just can't get enough of this stuff. So why not? And then I have some fennel fronds from that fennel bulb that I'm just gonna sprinkle on after it's cooked. So this is gonna go back into the oven for, I'm gonna say 10 minutes. And I'm purposefully getting Parmesan cheese all over the pan, like over the edges as well, cause I'm hoping it'll get a little bit crispy on the edges. How cool is it? It's pretty cool. Check it out. Okay, so this is going in for another 10 minutes. We'll see you then. So, the pizza's been in the oven for about 10 minutes, so I'm gonna take it out. Oh my God. Look at this thing. Ugh. And the cheese did exactly what I wanted it to do. So I put this on a parchment paper because it's easier to take it off the pan. There it goes. And um, we should probably wait a couple minutes before we cut, cut into it so that we don't burn ourselves. But I think I'm just going to cut into it. So how many pieces here? Maybe like... I know, eight. It's ripping hot. There it is. Broccoli crust pizza. That is way too hot to take a bite out of. Um, but I'll take a bite in a minute. So broccoli, oh shoot, I forgot to put the fennel on top. This was the final touch, the fennel fronds just for a little flourish, you know? A little extra green in case we don't feel green enough. So broccoli crust pizza is easier to make than normal pizza crust. It's full of broccoli. This one can be gluten-free because as long as you have gluten-free oats for the oat flour component. And what else? It can be dairy-free too. I'm going to make this for dinner more often, I think. I'm having it for dinner tonight, or I guess this is lunch. And it really holds together. The bottom's nice and brown. Okay, I think I can manage here. Mmm. Mmm. That's great. So that's broccoli crust pizza. I hope you make it. I hope you love it. And I hope you'll share your pictures with me on Instagram. Uh, you can find me there at How to Make Dinner. And um, I'll see you next Wednesday with something new. Cheers. <laughs>
Broccoli and salami pizza? Oh. Okay. Walking away. That's it? Mm-hmm. No. Mmm. It's so good.